Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Collard Valley Cooks. Today we're making a viewer request, pineapple cream pie. And boy, did it turn out gorgeous and so delicious. We make it all from homemade, except for my shortcut on the crust. You're gonna love this recipe, and I sure hope you try it at home. Now, today, I'm asking you to give us a thumbs up and please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And thanks for watching y'all, where we cook like Mama did. All right, the first thing we're going to start with is just talking about the ingredients for our meringue. There's so many opinions and different theories on meringue and today I'm going to use something that's a new trick that I read about and that is to put two teaspoons of cornstarch in your sugar. So I'm going to be using a quarter cup of sugar and I am going to add a couple of teaspoons of cornstarch to it. They say if you do this, the, the cornstarch will absorb any liquids that may be left over in your meringue. We're going to see if it works. Now, I'm going to stir this up. And it says stir it in your sugar. So I'm just taking my little teaspoon that I measured it with and I am just going around and pressing it into the sugar. Make sure when you're using a meringue or when you're making a meringue that you try to get a finely ground sugar. That'll help you as well. And always remember you don't put your sugar in there until the egg whites begin to froth up and get a little bubbly. So we're going to be using vanilla, cream of tartar, half a teaspoon, quarter teaspoon of uh, sugar, and then that couple of teaspoons of cornstarch that's in there in a four egg meringue. So let's go ahead and separate our eggs. And then we're gonna start mixing up our pudding. This is an old fashioned pineapple cream pie with meringue and a regular pie crust. Our pie crust is in the oven pre-baking. And when you put your meringue on your pie, you want your pie to be hot so that the eggs closest to the filling will be warm and cook, okay? So you're gonna wanna time it right. All right, we're gonna start separating four eggs. Now some of you may say, why don't you separate uh, your whites into a bowl and put your yellows into the bowl you're gonna make your pudding in? And uh, you can do that, but I do like to mix my sugar and cornstarch together really well in the bowl. So I like to put my dry ingredients in the bowl first and then add my liquids. Especially if you're making a chocolate pie because you're gonna wanna put the sugar in there with the cocoa and cornstarch and beat it really well. Now you can use flour instead of cornstarch. Just remember it takes twice as much flour as it does cornstarch. Also remember that cornstarch cooks up more clear and pretty for a pudding and flour is a cloudy look always, okay? So just keep that in mind, either one's fine. Whatever your granny used, you can do. I use them both for different things. Now, you want to be sure and use room temperature eggs for your meringue. So if you're not good at separating them, you may want to separate them when they're cold and then let them sit out at room temperature for about an hour before you cook them or use them in your recipe. These are really warm. They've been sitting out at room temperature so you have to be careful when you are separating them like that. All right, I gotta rinse off my hands. So we've got our pie crust in the oven. I did not make my pie crust homemade. I don't like to. Mama never did and Granny didn't. So if you like a homemade pie crust, go at it. I love the refrigerated rollout pie crust. I think they're delicious. I actually like them better than my homemade ones. Um, so it's in there browning. And we are going to start the pudding. I'm gonna go ahead and start the pudding because the meringue at the most will take three minutes at the maximum. Our pudding is going to take probably around five to six minutes, okay? 
So we're going to do it started in the microwave. I cook my pudding in the microwave. It makes it glossy and beautiful every time. So the first thing we're going to start with is our sugar and cornstarch. All right, so we're going to use a cup of sugar in our pudding. And cornstarch. Again, cornstarch. This time you're going to be using tablespoons of cornstarch. So we're going to use six tablespoons of cornstarch. Now you're going to whisk that cornstarch into your sugar. Real good. And then we'll start putting our liquids together. This is super simple. Now you can cook it in a double boiler or on the stove top if you want to. But if you do it this way, it won't scorch and it turns out beautiful and creamy and gorgeous every time. This is a trick my mama taught me years ago. Yes, my mama did it. She was a caterer and a wedding uh, cake decorator and caterer. And so she knew all the tricks of the trade. We are going to use this whole can of evaporated milk. And I'll tell you how many ounces it is in just one second. When I pour it in here, it looks like it is 12 ounces, which is one and a half cups. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add water until it's at least two cups of liquid. And I'm going to add just a little extra. That's the cream, okay? So we're going to pour that in. And I went ahead and added the little extra because I wanted to make a lot of pudding so that my pie is nice and thick. I'm gonna put in vanilla and butter once it's done, but we're gonna go ahead and beat this egg in to it. This is the same recipe you can use for banana pudding. And it's the same recipe you can use for a chocolate pie. All you gotta do is add the cocoa. But we're gonna add pineapple to this once it's done. So that's it, that's all there is to it. I usually keep my cup for my whisk to sit in so that my whisk doesn't get junk all over the counter. I really do that for real. For real, I'm just not doing it for the show. That's something I do. All right, so we're going to grab this pudding while it's good and stirred up. Make sure that cornstarch is stirred up really good off the bottom. You can even pick it up and look at it if you've got a nice batter bowl like we do. Now, my microwave is about 1,200 watts. Everybody's is a little different. I use the high setting on three minutes to start my pudding. Now, if for some reason you got this, you know, really powerful microwave, put it on two minutes. But after that, you have got to get it out and stir it super good to get the cornstarch mixed in there well so that you won't have a lumpy pudding. You can't just put it in there and cook it. You do have to take it out and whisk it and cook it like that. Okay, so while that's cooking at three minutes, we're going to drain some pineapple. Now you got to drain it. If you don't drain it, the juice will make your pudding runny. So we're just going to take our pineapple and press it up against the strainer really well and drain all of the juice off of it. And I mean, you need to really give it a good mash. And I'm just trying to decide if I think that is enough for our pie. Let's put it back in here and just see about how much it is drained. Because even if it's a cup in the jar, doesn't mean it's a cup when you're finished with it. See, I want it to have a lot of pineapple. Now these are tidbits. So these are gonna be nice pieces of pineapple in our pie. And you're gonna wanna smush them good I want to really get these pressed in there good. Okay. So now let's fill up this with pineapple. 
So use a cup of pineapple. You can use um, one of these with crushed and one of these with tidbits if you want to, or you can just use all crushed if you're more comfortable doing that. Because the tidbits are pretty big. I wouldn't use chunks, but since we're draining them, we want it to taste like pineapple, so you want to go ahead and use two cans of this so that you actually get plenty of pineapple in the pie. Pudding. And this is after three minutes. So you're going to take it out. Stir it really, really good. And you're going to put it in there. It looks pretty and golden. Now, when you make a cream pie, make sure you get your pie crust good and golden so that it doesn't get soggy on the bottom from the pudding. You're going to cover up most of that crust with meringue so it's not going to hurt that it gets some that it gets browned. So we're going to go ahead and start our meringue. The first thing you're going to do is add your egg whites and wait till they get frothy. Then you're going to start adding the sugar. in cornstarch. You need cream of tartar. You can use uh, cream of tartar or a little bit of lemon juice to help stabilize the meringue so that it doesn't fall flat on you after it's cooked. Now one thing you do not want to do is over beat your egg whites. And so right now what we're gonna do is test and see what kind of peak it has. That is a soft peak. See how it curled all the way over? We're gonna we're gonna beat these until that stands up. So that needs to point and stand up. And then at that point you stop beating. It. Now we're going to check and see what kind of peak we've got. That is a stiff peak. Now we're not going to beat it anymore because if you do, it'll overbeat. Ready to go on the pie. And we're timing it right because it's going to be, this is going to be out of the microwave in just a minute. Now your bowl's gonna get pretty hot, so make sure that if you continue to cook it, you know, remember that bowl's gonna get hot and use a pot holder to get it out. And there's our pudding. Looks really pretty. And now we're going to whisk it and fold in the pineapple. Now, if you want to substitute for the cornstarch, you can substitute with a third cup of flour, a third cup of flour, or use the six tablespoons of cornstarch. Okay, we are putting in our pineapple. Well, I got it packed in there, don't I? I smooshed it when I drained it more. A lot of people may not put that much pineapple in theirs, but if I'm going to eat a pineapple pie, I want to bite into the pineapple. That looks good. Now we're going to put in a little bit of butter and a little bit of vanilla. And I don't like to cook these in. So I add them at the end. 
usually put in a couple of tablespoons of butter at least and let it melt down in there boy don't that look good now that is an old-fashioned pineapple pie cream pie pineapple cream pie You want to fill it. I don't want to put any more in there. I'm going to make me a pudding cup with what's left. And now we're going to get our meringue on it and make it all pretty. And I do have a dollop of butter. I better get it off. We're going to take our beautiful meringue it is at a stiff peak and put it on this hot filling. The more the merrier. You're going to want to have your oven at 350 degrees. I like to use the small spatula. So I go around the edge first and make sure that all of my edges have plenty of meringue on them. That's the first thing you want to cover up. And then you can make it pretty after you get that accomplished. Got plenty of time to make it pretty. The great thing about using the cream tartar is it makes it a lot more um, workable to make it form those beautiful curls and swirls that you want uh, for your pie. All right. So once you get it around like that, then you can start Decorating the top, and some people want to swirl it like that, but now I like to swirl it back and forth, kind of like a deep swirl. And when it browns, Mama always did hers like that, but I like to swirl it in circles. And they don't have to all go the same direction. And you can sit here and play in it all day. It's so much fun. It's just one of those things that's fun and fun and beautiful. Now, if you get your meringue out of your mixer and it's all lumpy and flumpy, that means you've overbeat it. And you can't make it real pretty like this if you overbeat it. All right. So we're going to get this in the oven and we're going to bake it at 350 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. Now I do put my rack down low just so that I can do the pretty um, videos, but normally you would want it in the middle of the oven. So we're ready to get this out. Let me hit the okay. cancel on my oven. It's really pretty, gorgeous pie, nice and shiny, which is how you want your meringue to look. And you don't want to mess it up when you get it out, so be very careful. And then you're going to put it directly on a cooling rack. And do not put it in the refrigerator. Let it come to room temperature before you chill it. I hate to mess it up. It's so pretty. It really is. I'm going to slide it off of this because I don't want it to slide on me when I'm cutting it. And uh, let's just see what we can do. Now it's still still really warm, y'all. So take make sure you keep that in mind. Alright, I'm gonna give it a taste. I always have a hard time getting my fork under there. Yummy. 
It's really good, y'all. Good enough, I'm gonna get another bite. Well, that meringue is probably the prettiest meringue I've ever made. Mmm. If you want a good meringue recipe, this is going to be my new go-to meringue recipe, adding the two teaspoons of cornstarch. Y'all have a blessed day, and thanks for watching Collar Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. Bye, y'all. Love ya.